Hello, it's Maxine. Long time no post. <laughs> Ew. Um, uh, I did like one, I don't know, a week, eight days, nine days, really clean eating for my food sensitivities. Then I um, had like three cheat days and then I was two days back to eating clean and then I got the flu and oh my god I just couldn't even look at a vegetable for like a week since then because everything I was um that was coming up was like broccoli and carrots and garlic and stuff and it was like oh I couldn't even look at it <laughs> I'm just slowly starting to eat healthy again for a while I just had to eat like processed foods, instant foods, bread, white bread, everything that like makes me feel sick, but it's just <laughs> like everything that makes me not feel great, like bloating and gas and brain fog and skin irritation. Like I was getting a rash above my, like, um, around my liver area so I don't know what that was about but it could have been due to like the infection or like viral infection bacterial infection something like that anyway <laughs> this video is supposed to be positive because <laughs> I wanted to do I kind of did a video talking about um what I do like to take better care of myself in my 30s but now I want to do I may have to pick a different spot it's pretty noisy hmm I found a spot that's a bit more peaceful there will be traffic going by but from time to time you might hear the waves <laughs> So yes, as I said, I kind of made a video about things I do to take better care of my health in my 30s. And this one's more so directed towards other forms of self-care. So which helps with, you know, depression, anxiety, um, trauma, um, other benefits include immune system strength, reduces pain, improves mental health self-esteem, reduce stress, and so, um, I'll start with affirmations. So, you know, affirmations to yourself you say I am enough my voice matters it's okay to cry I am capable mistakes help me learn I am unique <laughs> challenges help me grow every day is a fresh start I am working at my own pace. I deserve peace. I add value. My I am resilient. I think as people we are pretty resilient. We can kind of you know hit rock bottom maybe even multiple times in life and still you know what end up on top and um it's you know it's not just physical it's not just um the connections that you have in your life and what keeps you grounded and and supported it is uh, has a lot to do with your internal like how you speak about yourself because you know, there are people out there who have tons of support and 
you know have maybe achieved a lot in their life even financially like money doesn't solve everything but there's still there's this emptiness or there's this guilt or shame or something that makes them you know not feel great about themselves and they might choose not to be here so um In order to get through, we do have to like learn to speak kindly about ourselves, even if you don't fully believe what you're saying. It at first, like eventually, it kind of helps rewire your brain. And like one small example is, um, I've always been the bigger girl. I lost a lot of weight in high school and I kind of maintained, I went up a little bit and then I maintained. And so at a very young age, my body was pretty ruined as I would say, like, you know, stretch marks, loose skin, mom arms, all like not shaming mothers whatsoever. It's just that at a very young age, like 14, 15, I already was left with a body that resembled somebody who had a baby and so I was very ashamed about that but when I read about you know sexual health and stuff like that one thing they would say is just to never you know speak negatively about yourself to your partner so that's one thing I took with me in dating and some of my relationships I just never you know, as much as I wanted to, you know, put myself down at times or however I felt, I never let the other person know that's how I felt. I like went into things like really confidently and it's kind of amazing because how, you know, you feel about yourself and how you portray yourself to the world is kind of how they see you. And then you know like how sometimes you have a scar on your body and even on your face and no one seems to notice until you point it out well the same thing goes with like how you speak about yourself and even some of your deepest insecurities if you you know if you don't bring it up to others sometimes they don't realize and and um, there was a time in my life I was feeling really low and I kind of did open up to one of my partners about what some of my insecurities about my body and stuff and I didn't really get too much into depth with it about like where how it all got started and whatnot and how I had you know accomplished a lot and how I had lost and gone up and down, but I was just more so expressing how I had gained a lot of weight too at this time and some other things. But, you know, when I always used to say to my girlfriends, oh, you know, even though things aren't perfect in this type of relationship, he never puts me down. He never calls me names. He never whatever. And then I open up about these things and then he like threw it in my face like the first chance he could like and it just I'm not saying I deserve that whatsoever and I'm not saying anyone deserves that if they are expressing themselves to their partner like you should be able to speak openly but I'm just trying to say that um it's kind of like when you it's like when you're speaking negatively about yourself to others in some weird way it they seem to get this impression that they have permission to speak the same way about you or I don't know because like this I'm talking about this it was like in my late 20s so all in my early 20s and you know as a teenager even that's not something I kind of express to partners or in relationships and then so thankfully it's not something that I experienced in relationships like even though like I was always the big girl and I clearly had issues with my body and I had signs of I had a body that was un unlike 
pretty much everyone at my age. Um, it's not something that was really ever brought up in relationship. It's kind of like we just didn't work out for whatever reason. But anyway, I hope that kind of, um, it's like one little tip of advice for girls out there is like, just don't, um, just, you know, it's something you can speak with your therapist about or friends or other family. But when it comes to like your intimate relationships, it's, I think a better thing to just not talk about your body insecurities. Um, maybe that's wrong. Like maybe that's just a sign that I've was in unhealthy relationships where I couldn't speak and without facing judgment. And that's very much could be the case but I think sometimes it's kind of like we put our partners on pedestals and then when you kind of draw attention to some of your flaws it's kind of like it shatters their image like some I know that just seems really silly but I hope people kind of understand where I'm what I'm getting to when I say that but um other things are so besides sleep nutrition exercise drinking enough water, those basics of self-care, um, you know, finding time to relax and, you know, even unplugging from technology. I think we spend a lot of time like glued to our phone and, and that, um, I think it's helpful in some ways, but then excessively, like you could be ruining your vision over time or you, um, we, I don't know. I feel indifferent about it because part of me just wants to unplug from technology and never come back but then also it's like it's very useful and helpful in some ways but I do fear it a lot like um, just the long-term effects and radiation but um, so as I said before about self-talk and aff affirmations and it's like, you know, instead of saying like, oh, I can't or I'm stupid or like constantly, it's like trying to flip over the word. Like instead of saying I can't, it's like, well, I could learn to improve or I'm stupid. Oh, I'm just not very knowledgeable on this subject, but there's always room to grow. So kind of taking those things that you say to yourself and flipping it in a way where it is more positive and helpful towards yourself. Therapy, of course, could be important. I know it's not a luxury for everyone because it can be pricey. Not everyone has insurance or coverage or... I did, I was fortunate enough to take part in a five week outpatient program where I learned a lot of these things. I did find my binder recently and I don't know where I put it but that's something I want to bring out for one of my videos because there's like a lot of useful tools in there and I don't think it would be illegal to share that with others because I think it could be very helpful um getting out in nature of course is very helpful in healing that's one of the reasons I moved to Victoria BC from Winnipeg is because we have very short winters here and it does rain more but not nearly as much as people think and being able to get outdoors like all year round essentially because for me I mean like you can be outdoors all year round anywhere in the world but I just couldn't tolerate the cold I hated getting bundled up it's one of my things where it's like I don't like jewelry I don't like I don't like anything that feels really restrictive it's very I don't know what it has to do with or what part of started at a very young age so um so I really don't like to you know wear the full gear and the you know Bella club <laughs> and everything and so living in a place where it's like I could be outside and next to the ocean especially in the sea all year round is like such a gift like I'm incredibly thankful and very lucky I know that not everyone can do it if they 
would like to live here. You just have to be willing to make a lot of sacrifices. I had to sacrifice a home, a three bedroom home, two bath with a big yard and a double garage and in the country, just this beautiful home. It was actually a hundred thousand less than me and my mom's home in the city. And we were like five minutes from the water and it was awesome, but it was just like, well, my mom's two sisters are here in Victoria and then for me, I just always wanted to move back to BC because I just feel like it's where I belong long term. Although I do miss Winnipeg at times, like some family, some friends and stuff, but yeah, it's um, part of my thinking is just that we're not really meant to be living in a climate that's so cold all year round unless you know it it is in your like like if you're from way up north and that's part of your history part of your heritage and you learn to adapt and then you guys and then you like live off the land like the way we are supposed to then it can then of course it's all it's all up to you and what you decide and what you enjoy there are some people who do enjoy that but I just think a lot of us because we get season seasonal depression and all that I don't think we're like meant to be living in a climate that can get so cold and dark for half the year so but I know not everyone can move out here but it is surprising how many people from Manitoba live in BC it's almost like every fourth person I talk to is from Winnipeg <laughs> So other things is gratitude. So learning to, remembering to give thanks for what you do have. And it's like being thankful, but um, just also like giving back when you can. Like one thing I want to do soon is, you know, instead of giving money to the homeless, if they do ask, um, I'd like to start buying like fruit and things and handing it out like oh the other day when I was driving down Pandora like the worst part of Victoria for um, the homeless population it just honestly made me cry because it was like it's just I just you know like there are people in the street who in some ways deserve to be there they could be in and out of jails like harming people I do understand that but there are people on the streets who are just simply addicts who need help that can't get the help they need some of them don't want it but um and then there's also people just solely based with mental health conditions that still can't get the help and support they need and or because their mental health what they're experiencing is so severe at the time they wouldn't even be able to get the help if they if they felt they needed it because of how severe things are so so it does make me cry and it makes me remember that that could have easily been me at times in my life suffering with my mental health before I got help and you know if I hadn't had help from a family member at times in my life and it's hard to admit that um but I know I'm not alone like a lot of people are in debt like student loan debt you know your mortgage car whatever the case may be times in your life where like emergencies happen that bills whatever it is and you you need access to funds that aren't there well some people are qualify for loans so you have a loan but then some people don't so I think like we've all needed help at times like very few I think are extremely responsible with money starting at a young age and I sure wasn't I didn't have that mentorship or I was just living for um good moments good memories there was a time in my life where I just didn't even think I'd be here today so yeah I wasn't thinking so much about the future I was living for the moment 
So next is boundaries. Um, sometimes, like, I really do feel for some people out there in the world because, you know, I see a lot. I see how, you know, sometimes I can just look over, glance over, and I see a couple's arguing in the car or, um, you know, neighbors, like the way that it's usually, and no offense, but it's like the way the man talks down to the woman, like in history, it's only been in like what the past 70 years that women have like gained more rights than ever before. But before then it was like women were very much controlled and cause the Bible says and whatever else, like, um, just a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> to control women's rights and their bodies and what they do with their body and their st and it's like right now there's this like they're trying to claw back their power like as much as they can with these insane laws about abortions and stuff down south in the states so and then you know there's those um influencers out there um influencing young men about how they should be treated in relationships and how they shouldn't take no as an answer and all that horse crap. So it's, um, it's kind of a scary time, but I also see a lot of good. I see that women are supporting women more than ever before. And that a lot of women are not willing to get into relationships without recognizing these signs or red flags and, um, but boundaries is more than just intimate, you know, relationships. It's with family. It's with friends. You do have to get to a point where you have to just put your needs first. Like, I know that's impossible. Sometimes you have people relying on you. You might have kids. But if you're not taking care of yourself and your happiness first, then eventually the stress might get so bad where you're either forced into treatment or you might die from like stress related you know it affects your sleep it affects everything in order for you to be able to take care of others to the best of your ability you have to we have we have to learn to like take care of our needs better you know like when I had my home daycare I loved it so much but I was working long hours and I would barely see the doctor in that time if I needed to I'd barely take time off work I was constantly giving back with my money um gifts for or special occasions birthdays cards and it's like I don't regret any of that but it's like I've always been one of those people where I like want to give back so much so just to like say thank you and make people feel appreciated and and if I could go back maybe I would have done things a bit differently just to prioritize myself and make things not so difficult on myself at times but um we need to learn to be able to not feel so guilty about expressing what we need like if we make plans and we really don't feel like going but on the other hand you know if you're becoming a recluse and you're not wanting to do things because you're fearing of what could go wrong I mean there were times those feelings started to come on with me like especially if I smoked weed which is one of the reasons I don't smoke anymore but it would just bring on a paranoia sometimes depending what was going on my in my life and the stress levels but there was a time in particular I did that before going out and I thought it would just mellow me out and it started to create this like irrationality like thinking something bad was going to happen and then I ended up just talking myself out of it and going out that night and I had a lot of fun with friends that I hadn't seen in a really long time and it just reminded me that we have to well first of all end bad habits that create these patterns of anxiety and um but also just solely with self-talk and and it's not like nothing bad will ever happen like you can speak positively you can talk yourself out of feeling bad you can go and something may happen but 
you know, it's kind of like, well, you know, life is short and we need to get out there and not like, I'm very much these days, like kind of back in that way and not in a paranoid way, but just kind of like a, just really taking a lot of time for myself these last few years since ending my daycare. And which includes, you know, not really seeing like ending ties with some relationships and friends and stuff. And it's like, I do feel very alone and I'm trying to get back to a place where I put myself out there again. So part of this is like, list is like speaking to myself and what I need to do, but it might help others. So with that, like I, um, I put here human connection. So human connection is very important. Um, the other day I had like an hour long conversation with someone who's basically like family to me, like from a young age, but they're, they were just a neighbor growing up, but, um, it was just very meaningful. It, you know, it's like someone who really understands where you're coming from and has seen you throughout your life and all the things you've gone through. And it's important to have these kinds of relationships to be able to like vent to someone who understands or you might not have anyone in the world and feel very alone but there are people out there who care and there's people who are in the same situation so we can find each other thankfully one positive with the internet <laughs> um you know getting back into hob your hobbies reading making sure to time take time for things like that that bring you peace and happiness because it's important um you know if your work is just taking way too much out of you then maybe there's a career that'd be better suited to you that's not like we're working enough as it is if there's something that you're doing that's taking beyond 40 hours a week then maybe there's something better suited for you out there um but then it's like well yeah but then i can't afford my mortgage well maybe you can downgrade maybe you don't need the house the size that you have even though you love it maybe something smaller that's just kind of like the mindset i got myself into was like minimalism so now i'm literally living in a trailer <laughs> and though although i do have a vehicle that's much bigger than i need um it's because it can pull my trailer <laughs> and now i use my vehicle for work so it actually works out well that i have one this size but if it wasn't for those two things then i would definitely have a small small vehicle that's like cheaper on gas but yeah, those are my tips. Um, <laughs> well, not my tips. It's like where I got my information from is just experience based. I got some to refresh my memory off Google. I'll try to include some links if, um, if I can find them again. Um, I'll definitely have to get my book soon. The five week, it was like CBD therapy, DBT. I can't remember exactly what it stands for, but I just know it helped me a lot and I know someone, other people who it's helped and so that's something I want to get into soon and share. And at that point in my life, when I went into this five week outpatient program, I just thought I was at such a low point that I thought I was just completely unhelp unhelpable. I thought that like it, I thought going into the class that I'd be amongst like the worst of the worst people out there. Like, I know that's really judgmental and horrible to say, but I thought I would just be in a room full of like criminal type of people. And I was just, cause that's just how low I was feeling about myself. But I was very, I, it was very eye opening to see that it was a room full of just everyday ordinary people from students to government workers, to ch teachers, to it was like everyone, we all like struggle at times. And sometimes you just keep it bottled up inside for so long that you, you know, lose 
um, you lose it, right? You're just suppressing it and eventually it's going to come out. So we really have to do these things to like take better care of ourselves. Um, you know, you can't just like fake it till you make it <laughs> in life. It doesn't always work. You have to um, really make an effort and because that's what I did I've, like for 28 years I was just you know I had my attempt when I was a kid I kind of like briefly got help we're talking like weeks nothing serious nothing concrete and then and then just basically going through life like dealing with trauma and childhood abuse and things and then in work and relation like school everything was just such so heavy and so hard and so difficult and I didn't know how to help myself and then in my late 20s I finally had like a full-on mental breakdown which gave me some of these tips and tools that it's like I kind of wish everyone was sort of forced to learn some of these things at a young age like we don't really talk like we talk about sexual health we talk about biology we like all these subjects but we don't and then there is psychology but we don't really talk about self-care enough or um what was the other thing basically um preventative like preventative health um things we can do to take better care of ourselves before things progress and get worse and what was the other thing I forget but yeah <laughs> I have many other videos to make um, soon I've kind of forgotten about doing my surgery video I should have been doing my week three of eliminating my food sensitivities but I'm basically gonna have to start all over again because I haven't had a flu in a really long time and my food sensitivities are so great everything from wheat rice corn almonds peas on and on and on so many things that I can't have that once I got sick I had to go to basic white food like plain <laughs> I should have been making soups and stuff for myself, but I just was feeling so low energy and like I was sleeping for like 20 hours a day practically in between like being sick. So, and then I need, like I couldn't even look at broccoli and carrots like they said for a week. So I need to get back to that because lately I've been feel like I've been overdoing it with sugar and junk food and then I feel like lethargic and not good at all and I was feeling so good and at least one positive is I did make it those eight nine days so I can do it again and another positive is I I quit coffee this past week as well so you know I don't drink don't smoke don't do drugs don't drink coffee I limit don't gamble like I've don't have promiscuous sex and that's not like against anyone I'm not shaming anyone but I've just eliminated all these things and so I'm feeling really good and proud of myself and and I gotta keep it up and not form any bad habits like the next one to kick is the next greatest last one is sugar addiction <laughs> so Oh, anyway, um, I'm, you know, I feel like I'm whispering because there's always like a high volume of traffic out here and stuff, <laughs> but, um, thank you for watching my video and eventually I got to get my like spare room, which is kind of like a walk-in closet, laundry room, junk room. I need to get it decorated so I can do my videos at home that would be nice because then I could speak more freely and like speak
speak with a bit more how I like like to speak and not like whispering. <laughs> I do have a little bit more personality than this. And I know what I'm saying. I'm not a doctor and I'm not giving, telling what, like telling people what to do. I'm just saying what like has worked for me and what I wish more people would do like when it comes to quitting addictions and taking better care of themselves because you know when you're not feeling well you're sometimes not treating the people around you very well or the people you work with or whatever so sometimes not always there are those people who are just givers and they treat everyone like amazing and they're so hard on, on themselves but that's why this list is kind of like something for everyone but anyway I always have a hard time with ending my videos I never know how to end it but thank you for tuning in um I'm also posting a video about the cherry blossoms of Victoria I just spent some time taking like videos of the beautiful cherry blossoms blooming right now the flowers and yes please like comment subscribe thank you for checking out my videos i appreciate it and have a good day